Hey, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening. No matter when you may be catching this particular broadcast, out to be supposed to hear your voice manager, I unmute the voice of women who are ready to speak up about what has kept her silent for way too long. Host of the hashtag Speak Easy podcast. That's hard. Uh, super excited to be coming to you guys with another hashtag morning press show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, been moving and shaking and doing some things. Uh, let me take off the privacy settings. Y'all know it'd be crazy that it'd be having these privacy settings. I, I'm gonna have to go check that. <laughs> Good morning, Eureka. Good morning, sis. I'm gonna have to go and check and see if I can change it in my settings because it just be doing the most where I gotta go in and change it every time I go live. Um, super excited. Listen, it's we about to be in the fourth quarter. I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. If not, get you get your butt around some people who are like about to go all in in this fourth quarter. Get your butt around some people who are motivated and encouraged. Um, I get it. I get it. Things they they have a changed it. They have. Uh, but guess what? Even though things are changing, even though things don't look exactly like they used to look, we can definitely make some things happen in this grand um, fourth quarter that we have coming up. Let me make sure that you guys can hear me clearly. We can definitely sure can that part because we do know that the shenanigans is live and in charge, y'all, for real. The shenanigans have been real. I'm super duper excited, though. You guys know that we've been going through the speaker path to freedom and we already finished the women's path to freedom. Both books are available. Both 21 day journals are available on Amazon, as well as if you message me, um, I can uh, make sure that you get a copy of those as well. Y'all. OK, let, let's talk about the title of today's message getting out of your mental box. So over the weekend and yesterday, if you didn't see yesterday's message, go back and watch it. Um, Over the weekend, we were talking about trauma and what that kind of does to um, you, depending on what kind of trauma you've been through, um, the situation that you're currently in, how it affects you, uh, and what tends to happen, right? And we put a lot of um, power behind somebody else um, being able to bring us out of that moment. And the reality is, is God gave you the power to come out of that moment. I know this is not going to be the feel good topic, y'all. It's not going to be the feel good topic, but it's going, it's necessary. And so when you get to the point where you realize that you do have the power, that life and death are in the power of your tongue, that you do have the power to bring yourself out of that, what's next? It's creating a strategy so that way you can stay outside of your mental box. Shame puts us in a box. Fear puts us in a box. And I say a mental box because the shame. <clears throat> although it's shame from something that happened, it's not happening at this moment. The fear, although it's something that could potentially happening, happen, it's not happening. It, it could potentially happen, but it's not happening. And so we put ourselves in a box because of something that's not happening. Um, we know fear, listen, fear stands for so many different things, false evidence appearing real, um, face everything and rise. Like people come up with so many different uh, little terms for it. But the reality comes in that we have to get outside of that box. And for some, it's going to be a harder fight depending on the situation to get out of that box than others. Real talk. For some, it'll be easy to get out of, outside of that box. For others, it will be very difficult to get outside of that box. And so 1 Peter 5, 7 says, 
Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares for you. Now, here's why, and, and I'll even read the, <laughs> I'll read the scripture before that because it says, six says, so humble yourself under the, under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. And then after that, it says, stay alert, watch out. Uh, for your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. So that, that teaches you something. First and foremost, when, when it's time for us to come outside of that box, first, first, we have to have trust in God. And so we've been talking about that more and more this week because I think that we're in a season where if we trust them, we're going all the way up. If we don't, we won't move past where we are. Good morning, Trudy. Good morning, Queen. How are you? If we don't, we won't move past where we are. And so there is There's a pivot in the road. There's a, a split in the in the road, a fork in the road. Do I go and and literally trust God with everything and just put it all in his feet and and be able to kind of get some hope and some peace to get out this box? Or do I try do I give him what I think he can handle? And then I try to handle the rest. Here's the thing. We give him what we think he can handle, and then we try to handle the rest. And so getting outside of our box, the first thing is we have to be able to trust God. And if we don't fully trust God, we have to determine why don't we fully trust God. So what did you pray for that did not happen that now it makes you distrust God? What did you go after that you fell short of and you thought that God was with you. And so now you don't think that God is with you anymore. What did you go through? It's funny, if you listen to uh, Generation Z, one of the things that they see, that you'll see in some of the videos is they're like, who hurt you? And they don't realize just how true those words are because a lot of times there's a person or a situation that hurts you and the blame, you've transposed it to God. Now, this may go a little deeper than what some of you are, you know, used to. This may go a little deeper than what some of you, you know, are willing to uh, tackle in your life. But think about it. In order for me to trust him more, I got to determine what made me not trust him. What made me walk away from his trust? What made me walk away from the comfort of his arms? And look, Eureka said truth. What made me walk away? It's not until I determine what made me walk away that now I can heal that. I can fix that bridge. I can mend it, whatever it is and be able to walk across that bridge again. Think about it like this. Come on. Come on. Come on. When we, when we have a bridge. A bridge connects us to another destination, a further destination than what we would be able to walk. Um, it makes it easier to get to the further destination. When a bridge is burnt, it doesn't mean that we can't still get to the destination. But it does mean that it's going to be a lot harder. Look, Eureka said, I did it for years. It, it means that it's going to be so much harder to get to the destination because now we got to go ups and downs and we got to go through valleys and we got to go through all of these things. Here's the thing. And I need you to own this for your journey, for your life, for your season. God, whatever bridge that I burned if it was a bridge that I needed, give me the tools I need to fix it. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Woo. Good morning, Queen. 
God, whatever bridge that I burned, God, let give me the strength I need to fix it. Give me the wisdom to know which bridge it was, the right words to say. And allow me not to confuse the bridges that I need with the ones that I don't. Like our prayers need to be different. But when we look at the bridge that God has given us, Sometimes we burned it again because we were looking at it and comparing it to what man could do for us. Right, Trudy? Look, that's a whole nother other situation. But we're looking at it from what God can do for us. Um, but then we're comparing it to what man did or didn't do for us. And... Can I just say, God is just such a generous God. He is such a generous God. We, we burn bridges. We, like he, he gifts us, like he gifts us, you know, things to us. And we'll go and we won't even see the value in it. And yet he doesn't stop. Exactly. Eureka said it. We need to know the difference. And I feel like we're, you know, always, and I won't even say I feel, whenever I I get closer to God, I see his hands on everything. Because I trust him to handle everything. I pray about it, I, I, I pray about it, I put it in his hands, and then I allow him to do what it is he is going to do. And I've seen him do some mighty things in the lives of me and my children. And even in the times when I wasn't, as close to God, I know, I, I could see the difference, right? And so when I say trusting God, I went, it's been what? My goodness, uh, 12 years now, almost. And I came to Maryland, literally came to Maryland. And it was just for me to um, get away for the weekend. It was a lot going on at that time. I, I had found out the girls were being molested. I had found out all of this stuff. And I was in a time where I felt it was strange because I was always the person that was going and helping everyone else. I was always the person that was going and supporting everyone else. And in that moment, I felt like I had no support. I felt like I had no community. I felt like I had nothing. And so I had, uh, I went to Maryland with my aunt for the weekend, for 4th of July weekend. And that was the only person that I felt like I had in my corner. There was nobody calling and checking up on me. There was no, like, and when we think about when we go through stuff, a lot of times we do have that feeling that we are alone, that there is nobody understands or nobody is there to call and check on us which is interesting because I became what I needed in that season. I, I, that's who I became. I became that motivation and that support for other women that have gone through things because when I went through, I did not have it to the level that I, I thought that I should have. Come on, come on. 
And so I went and I had so much, I had so much pain. I had so much anger, so much frustration. And I was depressed. I was going through so much. And, you know, my aunt was there for me through all of it. Like she, she prayed, she sure enough prayed me through. But I remember being so angry that weekend when I was supposed to go home because I was supposed to go move in with, um, I was supposed to move in with my, at my stepfather's house, which was my mother's old house. And my stepfather literally, when we were about to be on our way from Maryland back to Philly, told me to find somewhere else to go. It's so, it's crazy because People never understand. Um, like you don't always understand why a bridge is burnt. It wasn't until later years that I understood why God severed me from everything that I knew, everything that I was comfortable with. Um, and, and I literally had to get out of that mental box because I had to realize that where I was Y'all better catch this. I had to get out of my mental box because I had to realize that where I was was dead, dead ground. And he needed to, to put me somewhere where there was good ground so that way I could sow and reap as I should. And so it was dead ground there. The, the certain friendships that I had were poisonous friendships. Uh, it was it was dead ground there. And with everything that I had went through with my girls and, and fighting all of these things, I would not have I wouldn't be here right now. Come on. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now if I would have still been there. With everything that I, that I went through, and so getting outside of the mental box is realizing that God did something that the bridge might have been burnt in order to give you something better. Hmm. In order to put you in a better position, come on, come on, <laughs> to put you in a better position to open up opportunities and doors for you. And I I literally I have to say that if I would have if I would have stayed it would have been a different conversation. Good morning Donna, hey Elizabeth. It would have been a different conversation. And even when I think about the experience that my children were able to have, it's completely different than what if we would have stayed in that area, if we would have stayed in Philadelphia. But I, I have to be honest and say, the, the mental box that I was in when that bridge was burnt was that nobody cared about me. Um, Nobody cared about my children. Nobody wanted to support. Nobody wanted to help. People that I thought would have stepped up were nowhere to be found. And so the bridge was not just a small bridge. Nobody catch this. It was not just a small bridge. It was like an eight lane bridge because <laughs> there were some really important relationships that I had and friendships that I had that were all demolished at once. The mental box, when you go through that, people don't realize uh, when you're uprooted and you have to find a whole new friend group and you have to find new things to do. 
Like, and I'm as an introvert, I'm not, I'm not the person that's going to say, hi, my name is, that's not me. Uh, so you can imagine being in, coming from a big city to a small little town. And I'm like, oh, we so close. Why is there so many, <laughs> why is there so many people? Why are we so close? We can't, y'all need to scoot over some stranger danger. I can't, uh, but God shifted some things for me and he created new bridges. And the bridges that he created for me were bridges that were not just for me to go over, but they were bridges for my clients to go over. They were bridges for my children to go over. And so that part, good morning, Carolyn. They were, they were bridges and they were not just, here's the thing. <laughs> I need y'all to catch this. Sometimes when a bridge is destroyed, it's showing you that it wasn't that secure to begin with. Hey, trees, it's showing you that it wasn't that strong to begin with. Go ahead, let that filter through your shanana. Go on and let it filter through. Because some of the bridges that we cried about, some of the bridges that we that we didn't eat about, we weren't eating for days. Some of the bridges that we, come on, I got to sit up in the chair on this one. Some of the bridges that we were going and doing the sad songs, y'all, we was playing sad songs and everything. And God is saying, well, if you look at the bridge, the bridge wasn't that strong to begin with. So I, I destroyed the bridge. Oh, y'all better catch this. I destroyed the bridge because if the bridge wasn't destroyed, you would have attempted to go over it thinking that it would support you and it wouldn't. Come on, Eureka said the bridge wasn't real. <laughs> you would have went over it and literally it wouldn't have been as supportive as you needed it to be. But in our mental box, we're thinking, oh, it's because they don't care about us. Oh, here's the thing. Here's the Here's the, the gag. The gag is, is not that they didn't care about you, but there was something that you were carrying that was too strong for them to carry with you. It was too strong for you to, it was too much for you to carry over that bridge. And so he needed to make sure that you had a strong enough bridge to be able to take whatever he had you to, that you were going to carry across it. The people that I, the, they don't know nothing about all of this entrepreneurship. They don't know nothing about all of this being a speaker and getting paid to speak. They don't know anything about all of this uh, writing books and, and doing all of these and doing trainings. And all. they don't know anything about all of this social media. Stuff. They, they, they see it at a different angle. But if I would have attempted to do all of this and look to them for support, they wouldn't have been able to carry it and I would have crumbled. Come on. I would have attempted to walk across the bridge and the bridge would have collapsed. God says, be mindful. Uh, there is a difference between the bridges that were burned and the bridges that collapsed. The bridges that collapsed were not built with the strong tools that you needed. They weren't bu built on the value system that would keep it up. So a storm came and knocked down the bridge. Y'all better catch this this morning. I see a little heart coming up. I see y'all. You Listen, a storm came and knocked out the bridge. A hurricane came and knocked out the bridge. Uh, an earthquake came and knocked out the bridge because it wasn't created to sustain against that level. You know how they always talk about uh you know you're gonna have you're gonna experience different things on different levels. Well you will and you have to be careful about who you have supporting you in that level because if they buckle under pressure that leaves you vulnerable. If they buckle under pressure, 
that will leave you vulnerable. If they buckle under pressure, I'll take it a step higher. If, if they buckle under pressure, hmm, that leaves your purpose vulnerable. And so we have to get to this point where we got to come out this mental box and realize that what God has for me is for me and has to trust in him. We have to trust in him. And getting back to that trust allows us to be able to say, okay, if the bridge was burnt, it was for a reason. If the bridge crumbled, it's because it there was something there that was not secure. God, show me what that was. So that way I can see it the next time I'm, I'm in a relationship, the next time I do a business deal, the next time I do a friend. Come on. See, you're so worried about the bridge that you forgot that there was a lesson that came with it. Come on. You forgot that there's a lesson that came with it. And so the lesson is, God, whatever, whatever crack that was. God, let me see that crack before I get in too deep next time. Whoo, come on. Tatree said, this is the second day God has said this to me. Listen. God, I thank you for changing. That's it. Thank you for changing things in my favor, not just changing it, but changing it in my favor. Because, see, that's the, that's the ultimate. When we get out the box, we realize that he didn't just change it. He changed it in my favor. I have favor. Grace and mercy. And so he changed it in my favor. And so it literally. I'm looking and I said, okay, well, you got me doing all these things, God. You got me speaking and all of these different things. And I look and I go to events and I'm like, there's other events where their whole family is there supporting them. And, you know, they're, they're, they're like, yes. And, and, and you know, they're taking pictures together as families. And, and I'm just looking and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I could be back in my box. But I said, God, so that is not my picture. That is not the journey you have for me. So what does my journey look like? Going back and just asking God, what does my journey look like? What is it that's going to happen uh, for me and my children? So I know that my children have a different mindset. My children, you know, they're able to experience so many other things in the world because of what we've gone through and what we've endured. And they are overcomers. I'm thankful about that. No, I don't expect them to be at every event. No, I don't expect them to be cheering for every single thing. But I do know that they appreciate me. I do know that they love me. I do know. And I see the change. And it wasn't until here's the thing. When we come outside of the mental box, then we realize some of the bridges that you thought were burnt, they weren't. There may have been a fire, but the fire was to test it, to test the strength. And the bridge still stands. Somebody, there's a parent, there's a wife, there's a husband. There's a child, there's an aunt, a niece, a nephew, an uncle, a brother, a sister. There's somebody who needed to hear that part. Like the rest of the message was great for you, but you just needed that part because you needed to understand that although there was a fire, the bridge was not demolished. It was burnt 
and you can go back and fix it. You can go back and do the work to make, to strengthen it. I look at my children and I'm looking at how God is strengthening our relationship as they get older. I'm looking at the, the friend circle I have and how God is going and strengthening those friendships as we're going and getting older. I Guess what? Bridges, the bridge did not fall apart. The bridge lasted. Come on. It lasted. Whew. It lasted. And here's the thing. Because you saw the fire, you immediately thought that the bridge was completely done. Because of what you've been through, you went right back into that mental box and thought that bridge is, is, is done, it's over with. I'll never have my child, that child that I had back then, I'll never have that child again. Well, no, because they're different. This is a different stage. This is a different level. The child that you have as a teenager is not the same child you had in elementary school. I know we try to hold on to our babies and keep them as babies, but the child that we had that is an adult is not the same child that we had that was a teenager. And here's the thing. Can I tell y'all something? When you still speak to them as if the bridge has burnt and, and fallen apart and come, you are speaking that over that relationship. But when you see that the bridge still stands, now it's not a thing of, okay, oh my goodness, the bridge is burnt. We can never have, we can never do this. We'll never do, no, 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 no. Now you go back and you say, okay. So one of the beams for the bridge got a little damaged. I hope y'all catch this. One of the beams for the bridge got a little damaged. Let me go back and fix the beam. One of the beams, listen, some bricks on one of the sides of the of the bridge started to come down or or the uh, the rocks and the concrete started to crack a little bit. Let me see what it is I need to go and fix that. Let me go back and fix it. Instead of me saying the bridge is demolished, it's destroyed, it's done with, it's over with. I'm never speaking to them again. I'm never calling them again. I will not look at look for them. They don't have to look for me. Let's be honest, because I'm, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be real. As an introvert, trust and believe. I will go in my bubble and it is a nice, pretty place. <laughs> Come on, Sharonda said to support the infrastructure. Come on. I will go in my bubble and it is a nice, pretty place. Trust and believe. It's Netflix there, some brownies, Fritos, Tahitian treat. Listen, sis will be okay. But I had to learn coming out my box and I'm very transparent. Coming out of my box meant I had to go back and be the one to start the conversation sometimes. And it wasn't even a conversation where I was looking for an apology. I had to go ahead back and start the conversation and just say, I love you. That's what fixing the infrastructure looked like. It looked like me going back. And sometimes we didn't even have a full on conversation, but I at least came back and I listened to what it is that you had to say. Y'all don't understand. This is maturity over here. People look at me and be like, she talk like she, like she, like she, oh, oh. <laughs> she talk like she, like she got deep, got it deep down. <laughs> her finger toe old, oh, like, but the reality is, is I've been through so much in my 40 plus years on this earth. It goes beyond what some people have endured who have lived twice as long as me so far. And I stopped being I stopped being reactive to everything and I started being proactive. 
And so being reactive is when a situation arises and then I get all out bent out of shape and then I go and I, I, you, you blow up, you have all these things happen. But being proactive is saying, if this is a relationship that matters to me, then how can I strengthen it? How can I make it better? What can we do that's different, um, you know, to just be able to go and strengthen this conversation? And that's going to be different for every single person. It's going to be different for every single person. But it's what matters. It's the reason why when I work with clients, they, they're like, coach, I've never had anybody like that put me in this mindset to be able to do this kind of work on me. It's because I'm not looking at the reactive. I'm looking at the proactive. I'm looking to set you up for the next thing. And even when I tell people the different tools and tips and resources, I have people that come back to me years later and say, I'm still using what you taught me. They're, they come back later and they're like, I'm still using this technique. I'm still there. I had someone and uh, oh my goodness, it like my heart, <laughs> it just went into overdrive. And she said to me, she said, you know, she said, you just drop in my spirit and God just downloads all these things that he's doing in your life. And I'm just like, wow, like God, she's amazing. Like, I don't understand like how it is that you're not like this bigger name and this bigger. And I'm just like, you know, I'm just me. She said, but you don't, you know, you don't come with like this boastfulness or nothing, but you know so much, you have so much wisdom. And she said, the way that you talk to women and the way that you help them, here's the thing. She said, <laughs> when I'm unmuting women, I'm not just unmuting them physically to tell their story. I'm unmuting something that held them back from healing. Y'all better come on this morning. I'm unmuting them from something that kept them held back, um, that kept them captive, something that wouldn't allow them to fully heal at the, the capacity that they needed to heal in order for them to go and do whatever it is they need to do next. And so, because of that, I got to stay close to God. But because of that, everything I touch is different. Every program I do is different. Every time I work with clients, one-on-one -on -one is different. Every time I do my accountability calls, it's different. Like when we call our calls on Saturday, listen, they be like, this church before church, they be like, okay, now I got to recover from this so I can be ready for church on Sunday. And I just be like, listen, because when God download, I'm not holding anything back anymore. I'm not thinking that I have to be silent about what God is telling me for different people. I don't have to be silent anymore. Those things. Because I, I, listen, that was the confirmation. God is saying, no, there's a healing that happens when you speak. And then it keeps being confirmed. God keeps reminding me. Oh, I love my daddy. Every He keeps reminding me of it. You want to know why? Oh, y'all better catch this. You want to know why we go through so much? It's because we don't have the people around us to remind us of certain things. We don't have the people that remind us of how amazing we are. We don't have the people around us that will remind us that we are a king's kid. We don't have the people that remind us that we are above and not beneath. We don't have the people that will remind us that we are a lender and not a borrower. We don't have people reminding us that we have life and death in the power of our tongue. We don't have people reminding us of who we were called to be. We don't have the people that are reminding us. And when God sends the people that remind you of those things, Hold on to those people. Hold on to those people. When you have people that come and remind you of those things, you are strong. You are amazing. Guess what? And this is the thing. And they're not just doing it to hype you up, but they're doing it because they see something on the inside of you that sometimes you can't see inside yourself. They see something. And it is pouring out. 
And because you are so close to it, your vantage point, you can't see it. One of the prayers that I always pray is that, you know, we go from the overflow. Well, there are people that God sends to you that can see the overflow. And you just sitting there going, well, I, where where you get that at? Where, where that come from? Who, who said that? <laughs> who said that? Who said that? Who did that? And you're looking and going, well, I'm just, you know, telling you my experience. I'm just telling you what I've endured. And so it was funny because it all happened that same week that I went and I had to get the e the echo, I had to get the EKG and I go and I get all of these. And while I'm there, <laughs> y'all better come on. While I'm there, um, getting the echo and on the screen is one screen that pulls up it's red and the blue, and it's the this the blood. Y'all better y'all better catch it. It's the blood as it's moving through. You know, red is oxygenated, blue is unoxygenated or non-oxygenated. Is that the word? Is it unoxygenated? I don't know. That medical was not my line of of this. Mental was mine. Psychology, sociology, that was me. Medical, not she need her. But you literally saw it, you know, transferring. I saw that and had, and I wish I would have recorded it, but I saw that before she said to me what God had downloaded to her. And literally she said, I see the red and the blue. She said, and it's you and the healing is taking place, she said, and it's you and the Holy Ghost working together in the different women that you're connecting to. And I was just like, if she knew what I saw when I was on that table, <laughs> looking at that screen, and I was just looking and I'm going, wow, God, again, confirmation upon confirmation. And I'm just like, wow, God, there's a healing. I don't, and, and that's why I don't get offended when people are removed or people move on from my programs because you're all, you're moving on in, in one or two capacities. And it, this is it. You're moving on in one or two capacities. You're moving on because you're scared to heal and you're fighting that, or you're moving on because you have healed and it's time for you to go on to the next thing. Come on. Good morning, Wilma. Hey, sis. I haven't seen you in a while. You're either moving on because you have gotten that healing and you have gotten to that point where now you're coming out and you're like, I got all of this and we about to take it all by storm. We about to do this. We about to do that. I have clients right now that literally I, I'm like, they, they no longer drag their feet when I say that there's something they should execute on. They no longer go and question it and say, okay, well, do I do it now? Do I? They like, oh, that's what we're doing? Okay, let me go get this done right now. Why? Because they see what that does. They see how that goes and that creates the momentum for whatever is coming next. And they've been prepared for things that were coming their way. I'm not, listen, I've been on the phone. Mm, I'm not going to get emotional this morning. I've been on the phone with my clients. as they were searching for loved ones who had committed suicide and hung themselves from a tree. I've been on the phone with clients who had just come out of surgery and come out of dealing with getting the, the worst news ever from hospitals. I've come, I've come, listen, I've been on the phone. I've been in text messages with people. Even while I was in the hospital, getting my blood transfusion, I was checking in on people who had just gotten surgery and people who were praying for family. Guys, y'all don't understand. Um, It's not, it's so much bigger than uh, a program. It's so much bigger than a book. It's so much bigger than all of that. To the point where I'm checking on 
a, a good friend who she just got out of surgery. And she, she found out I was in the hospital. She said, how are you in the ER checking on me? Sis, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm okay. I'm good. Are you okay? It's so much bigger. So much bigger. And we get we get so inundated with it's about the money, it's about the numbers, it's about you having this many people in your live stream, it's about you having this many people in your program and you having this and making fifty thousand dollars in a weekend and all. Your 10,000 people that's following you on social media. First of all, they don't even all get your notifications. So that part. I've, I've had the big email list. I scrubbed it. I've had the large social media pages and all the pictures and all of these things. I went back and deleted so much stuff like the other day. From my business page, I started deleting stuff. I went from about 600 photos down to like 400 photos because I'm, I'm clearing it all out. When you get outside of the mental box, I'm no longer easily excited by the this and oh, the next best thing and the shiny object syndrome and this and that. Oh, download this book and get this. And th I'm not. I'm not easily excited with people saying, oh, yeah, I got, you know, oh, we're looking for speakers for this. We're looking for speakers for that. And and I go, God, am I supposed to be speaking here? Come on. Thank you for sharing, Wilma. I appreciate it, sis. Am I, am I supposed to be speaking here, God? I'll tell you. I'll give an example. And I talked about this a little bit yesterday. I am speaking in Virginia Beach, Virginia this weekend. I don't know what God is doing. Um, It was... One of my clients made the connection and I said, OK, let's go for it. Uh, I got the news from my doctor that we still have more testing to do because they still don't know what's going on with my body. Um, they don't know, but God knows. So I'm good because it's in his hands anyway. So I have all of these tests. They still got to run. I got to get more blood work done. And I was just like, OK, mentally. With everything, again, I went back into that that box. I was triggered. And so I went back into my box and was like, OK, <laughs> well, let me just go ahead. Uh, I don't have to cancel because I can do virtual and like all of these things started popping up in my head. And then I stopped. I went back to God and said, OK, God, what do you want me to do? I, I, you know, I, and that's what I was talking to you guys about my butterflies. And I, if you're in the unmuted voices group, I sent you the post that I did in the band app of the butterfly. So you can see the butterfly that I was talking about. That was like hard to see it in the picture. So I had to put a heart around it. <laughs> I had to put a heart around it so people could see it. Uh, but I went and I said, all right, well, God, I'll just go ahead and call and I'll do virtual. And when I went to the meeting that I got too late, it was spoken. Oh yeah. Cause there's somebody that was going to call and, and, you know, switch from being in person to virtual, but you need to be there in person. I didn't say this to nobody that I was going to go and just do it virtual. I didn't say it to nobody in that arena. No. But again, when I ask God, when I go back and I, when I get outside of that box and I go back to him and I have seek his face and I talk to him about it, he'll answer. me. And so he answered in a big way. Listen. Uh, he answered in a, a major way on that particular call. But I was just like, yeah, no, I. Wow. <laughs> wow. But I, we got to come outside of that that mental box. And so for those of you who are just coming in, because, of course, we're past our 30 minutes, as always. Uh, the scripture was first Peter five, seven, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. But I started at six and went down. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Think about that. 
Because a lot of times we think we have to fight because they they disrespected us. They did they blocked us. They're talking about us. They're to, you know they're they're take they're stealing clients from us. But we forget that uh, humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time He will lift you up in honor. And so I've had people who blocked me who came back and apologized. I've had people that were talking about me who came back and apologized, and I didn't even know that they were talking about me. I had people that went and. Uh, stole clients that came back and apologized, like all types of craziness or, you know, that was going on because y'all know entrepreneurship is bananas. When you think about the coaching industry, it's a lot that goes on. Seven, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares for, about you. Eight is stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are, that part. And even when I think about 10, 10 and 11 says, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm foundation. If that ain't talking about a firm bridge, a strong bridge, then I don't know what I'm just saying all power in him forever. Amen. And so that's it. Here's the thing. And when we, when we get out of our box, you start putting your name in there. You start putting your name in it. So humble yourself. <clears throat> so I humble myself under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift me up in honor. I will give all my worries and cares to God for he cares about me. I will stay alert watching out for my great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I'm standing firm against him and being strong in my faith. Remember that my family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering I am. In his kindness, God called me to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after I have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen me. He will place me on a firm foundation. Put your name in it. Put your name in it. Coming outside of that mental box is, it, it's like a release. It's a release button almost. And all of the stuff that's been boxed in, it gets released. All of the frustration, all of the unforgiveness, all of the pain, all of the fear. Like, and even when we think about fear, because people go, um, yeah, cast, you know, over um, no, uh, do it, do it anyway, afraid, or you know, they say a uh, cast out the fear, or they, you know, what I mean, they tell you all of these different things, but a lot of times the reason why the fear is there and the reason why it's gotten so strong is because you've lived with it. You've slept with it. You've ate. You've eaten breakfast with it. Listen, let's be honest. You've gone and you've you've married fear, and you've given it a position in your life because you're in this box and you don't see that there's other things out there. You don't see that there's joy, hope, peace, love, a sound mind. Come on, you don't see that there's other things because you've been in bed with fear. And so when you get out of that box, you, you're literally getting out of the bed of fear. You're getting out of the bed, bed of frustration, of all of that anger and stuff. You're getting out of the bed of that and deciding I'm going to have a much better day today. That part. So I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. I'm about to go get my walk on, get my walk on, get my walk on. I'm about to go get my walk on. Uh, they are cutting grass, y'all. Pray my strength. Pray my sinuses. Uh, <laughs> um, get this walk done, and man, I'm loving it. I he's I've already uploaded one of the other two books. Uh, another one is going to be uploaded this week, but they haven't been published. So only the only two that are up are is the one we're going through right now, Speaker's Path to Freedom. And then the woman's path to freedom is the other one that's going on right now. Um, that's on Amazon right now. But the rest of them haven't, they've been uploaded, but they haven't been um, 
loaded for y'all to be able to purchase it. I'm excited, you guys. I'm excited about speaking in Virginia this weekend. Hey, uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Super excited for the Internet Women's International Conference. And this is about to go down, y'all. Y'all wait till y'all hear this message. Because it's about to be all the way live. Y'all wait till y'all hear this message uh, that I'm fitting to share. It's about to be something. But I, my prayer, and just stand in agreement with me, my prayer is that there will be lives changed. Um, there will be lives changed. And this is this is bigger than us, y'all. It is bigger than us. I appreciate you guys. Uh, don't forget, check out a new episode of the podcast went out today, the hashtag speak easy podcast on all pack podcasting platforms. Um, don't forget the hashtag is better in front of speak easy. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. They loud. <laughs> don't forget to press it out that part. <laughs>